Tis the spooky season. Let's go ghost hunting in Cassiopeia. Welcome to SETI Astro. Before we jump into it, I want to say I'm just a, a few dozen people away from 10,000 subscribers. I never thought I'd have 10,000 subscribers at all on YouTube. Uh, so just thank you everyone. And if you haven't subscribed yet, considering just hit that subscribe button down at the bottom, I'd, I'd love to hit 10,000. I think that just a just an amazing milestone. So I've always avoided this target because Gamma Cass is extremely bright. Uh, common name is Navi or Tish, uh, but it just wreaks havoc in a lot of systems. And I was just like, I, I'm I'm gonna go for it. We'll we'll see what happens. So I got a little over 37 hours worth of data. Uh, I got four, 46 15 minute exposures in hydrogen and then 32 15 minute exposures in oxygen and sulfur. I did do 128 uh, two minute exposures for luminance, but really only about 90 were usable. And then the rest of the balance was just RGB. The luminance here, I mean, look, look pretty darn good. E yes, gamma cast is extremely bright, but uh, all, all in all, there's there's nothing nothing weird going on with the luminance. So I was I was really happy with that. RGB similarly, yes, my flats weren't the best. It looks like uh, you could see some some curves going on here, but this is just the the raw RGB stack. So again, nothing nothing too crazy here. Even on uh, gamma cast, it looks like I do have a little shadowing here. Which, if that's all the more weirdness I'm getting in RGB around Gamma Cast, I'm, I'm really happy with that. Especially considering it's capturing a bunch of the Reflection Nebula that if you only shoot in narrow band on this target, you're, you're going to miss. You're going to miss all this reflection within the Nebula itself too. Kind of this ghostly gray color is really is really just all reflection. Hydrogen, we can start seeing, we can start seeing problems. Uh, we can start seeing uh, really tiny micro-reflections here around... Gamma cast itself, it may be hard to see, but they're, they're circular artifacts of the, the micro lenses on the sensor itself. And then you could see here just internal reflections happening um, because these are 15 minute exposures, right? It's capturing really faint stuff. So any internal reflections from gamma cast bouncing off the reducer, filters, all that is going to be able to uh, show itself. Similar story with sulfur. You can see the big reflection off over here. And then after we actually do the continuum subtraction, it's really going to become evident. And then oxygen, I, I got oxygen. I was pretty encouraged by this. There was really no strong internal reflections and there's some oxygen signal here, but you're going to see that this is, this is false. This is just continuum data that uh, happens to be at the same wavelength as the oxygen. And, and we're going to see that here shortly as well. And now for doing the continuum subtraction on sulfur, now you could really see the internal reflections, right? There's a, a big shadow from my secondary here. We got these overlapping internal reflections over here. There's one up in the upper portion. There's one in this corner here. It's a really similar story for the hydrogen continuum subtracted data as well. Much cleaner, stronger signal in hydrogen here, but you know, here's a big internal reflection here, the big shadow from the secondary there. There's a, another arc up here from yet another internal re reflection. So this is all stuff uh, I had to deal with and I was expecting it, uh, but I was not to be deterred. And this is where masks really come in handy. And just for demonstration, this is the stuff that I ended up having to do. Just literally had to draw a mask, apply it, and then using curves, you can see now I could just adjust the masked area there. And you want to get it just so it matches the background there. So here's the after, just that quick curve adjustment. Here's the before and the after with that masked area. And that's what I had to do. Just carefully go through each of these little areas, make a mask, adjust the curves, make another little mask, adjust the curves, little by little until I had um, a decent enough result to actually put things together. 
But even doing things like just stretching and contrast boosting, I ended up having to mask out some of this area and just crush it all the way down to, to pretty much zero uh, to get rid of some of those other really bad reflection lines from the actual spider veins holding the secondary. But uh, you could see, you know, once you get it cleaned up, some of this in hydrogen especially just is amazing looking. Especially if I just orient it uh, 180, you could you could see the shadows from gamma cast getting cast onto like the, the main pillar here in hydrogen. So really cool stuff in hydrogen. And again, I was really excited that I had oxygen show up, but and here and here's the big but when you do continuum subtraction with the oxygen data, there's no uh, there's no oxygen signal at all. That was just all continuum at the same wavelength as O3, so it let, let it through, right? It's just the reflection from gamma cast at that same wavelength coming through the filter. And you can see there's just, there's just no data here. Um, barely any difference here. And then on the main pillar, you actually just get a little dark out, outline where the pillar was. Um, so there's just, there's just no signal, no oxygen signal here. So even with uh, 32 15 minute exposures in oxygen there's just absolutely no oxygen signal in this nebula at all which is a little surprising to me that there's hydrogen and sulfur but that gamma cast isn't actually ionizing any oxygen or it's just the cloud is just devoid of oxygen itself i i, I really don't have the answer for that if somebody knows that that'd be that'd be really cool if you told everybody in the comments what's going on with oxygen in the, the ghost of Cassiopeia here. Now for the narrowband continuum data, this is how I combined it. Um, so if you go HSS, that's, that's a pretty cool palette. Uh, there's a lot of like whites in here and stuff, uh, but I decided to make hydrogen just red and then sulfur I made orange and then just screen those two together. So it gave me, I thought, a, a much more natural looking palette for the ghost of Cassiopeia. Uh, having the oranges in for the sulfur and then the, the reds for the hydrogen. So this is this is the palette I chose for the narrowband continuum subtract data. Again, no oxygen, no oxygen signal. And the starless RGB image I thought turned out really well too. Um, I really wanted to try to highlight some of the, the blues from the reflection nebula from Gamma Cass. And there's just a lot of color and structure in here that, again, you're just missing in the purely narrowband data, especially this little guy down in here. And again, the pillar is looking just really cool. So then it was just a matter of, you know, smushing it all together. And I did end up orientating it uh, the, uh, the other direction from how I actually shot it. So we have gamma cast up here just shining away, crazy bright. And then the ghost of Cassiopeia. Uh, I again tried to maintain some of these blues that were in from the reflection nebula best I could and really tried to let the the nebula really really just highlight itself. It's it's one of these hard targets to capture just because gamma cast is so so bright and I was really excited with how this ended up including being able to capture some of these very small uh, internal nebula to the structure and, uh, and a very, very red star here, which uh, we're going to talk about in a second. So that really, really red, crazy red star is actually a carbon star. And carbon stars are pretty rare out there. They're in a very short span of the stellar life cycle uh, where they're doing this weird helium burning process into carbon. You know, double clicking on it does take us uh, directly to the Simbad page here where you could, you know, read up more on it and See, it is on the carbon star list, number number 44. If, if you've never read up on carbon stars, there's some really good articles out there from various sources, some more technical than others. But, you know, maybe just a good place to start is uh, Wikipedia, too, if you've, if, if you've never looked these things up before. But really, really interesting objects out there, and it's really fun to find one in your image. We also have this little uh, nodule, this little tiny nebula within the ghost itself. And again, looking this up, you know, it's just, you know, hydrogen ionized region, not, not, not a whole lot of information on it, which is always uh, fun to see that, you know, sometimes some of the things you're looking at just, um, you know, it may be a little more out there, not, not, not a whole lot of detail on them. 
Something that I found pretty surprising is there's no visible galaxies uh, in the Sinbad catalog at all for this entire region. There's a couple designated, uh, but when you look, there's just uh, there's just nothing there. But it really takes uh, just really looking close and finding a little smudge and then doing a deep Vizier search to even get a galaxy. So when you're staring at this part of the sky, almost every single thing is in our Milky Way, which which is unusual. Usually there's a bunch of stuff peeking through the background, but it's just, uh, you know, being able to explore your own images like this that you never know what you're going to find, and I always love doing it. Well, I've also uploaded it to Astrobin, where you can do the mouse over to the Starless version. I have all my acquisition details here. A little write-up uh, showing off the, the internal reflections that I had to deal with. You know, the, the carbon star. And then just some highlights of some of the, the close-in, uh, really, really pretty area around the, the ghost Cassiopeia. And if you've never been on my website to just look at my images, that's where I have everything too. If you go to Nebula, top of the Nebula page, they're all in kind of chronological order where I have imaged them. And here's our ghost Cassiopeia. It has a mouse over zoomable image you could look at. You can click and download the full resolution if you want as well. I have a little uh, pointer chart here how to find where uh, Gamma Cass is and Cassiopeia so you kn know where you're looking at here in the, the sky. I have some of the narrowband continuum subtracted images here, you know, highlighting where that carbon star is and, and where that pillar is. Well, I hope this encourages you for the, the spooky season to get out there and find a ghost of your own. I'm just a couple dozen people away from 10,000 subscribers, so if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, be sure to hit that subscription button, especially if you, you like the videos I put out. Please comment, like, and subscribe.